Okay, um, let's talk about how lean got its name. I was present at the creation. Uh, do not blame me, however. I'll explain why. I did the best I could. Uh, in hindsight, maybe I didn't do so well. I just did the best I could from where I came from. So here's a story. Uh, imagine spring of 1987. Spring of 1987. Cambridge, Massachusetts. Massachusetts Institute of Technology School of Engineering. And a room, which was the team room for the International Motor Vehicle Program. In that room, there is one gigantic desk because the people on the team have pushed all the desks together in the room to create a gigantic desk because someone thought that's the way they do it in Japan. And that's really true. That's why we did it. So the uh, team members are all sitting around the desk. Average age must be about 25 or 6. This is a children's crusade. And these are MIT graduate students, either uh, in um, economics or in political science or whatever, some engineering students, and some MBAs. And the team is there because we have a problem. And the problem is that we are writing an article for the Sloan Management Review to appear uh, shortly. The article is finished, and the title is The Triumph of The. That's the title. And that's the problem. The what? So I said, uh, hey, folks, uh, we've got to come up with a name for this thing. Okay? So uh, somebody said, well, you know, it's really based on Toyota. Why don't we just call it Toyotaism? And I said, well, A, there's a Toyota production system, and this is more than that. I'll explain why in a minute. So I can't, we can't call it that. Um, and we can't call it Toyotaism or Toyota production system, and we can't call it the Toyota with a D for the family system. That's a brilliant family through the generations. Can't call it that. Uh, we're not going to call it uh, the Japan system because uh, we've got our star pupil here, John Krafchick, who has come over from NUMI, where we think they have just proved that you can do this in these United States. Um, <clears throat> and taking some very bad people and putting them in a good process and getting a result that's comparable to Japan. So we're not going to call it Japanism. And that's just, just terrible. We're not going to do that. So what are we going to call it? And there's a silence. I don't remember whether Dan Jones was there. I was trying to figure that out. Uh, you know, there was no video. I wish there were a video. I do remember that I was holding the marker, and there was a whiteboard behind me at the end of this enormous desk. So I said, we got no time. The article's finished. It's ready to be published. We don't have a name for this thing. Well, what was the thing? The thing was uh, based on surveys, global surveys of product and process development performance, of production performance, of supplier management performance, and of customer support. So those were four elements. And then there's a kind of general management issue on top that we really hadn't formulated yet. So we said, uh, buh, 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 why don't we call it for what it does? Because I said, let's call it, that was my contribution. I said, why don't we call it for what it does? Because on each of these dimensions, we now have survey data that we have on the ground documented that there's an enormous difference in performance between Toyota, the Japanese average, the American average, the European average. And so, therefore, why don't we name it for what it does? So it's less time, less human effort, less space, less capex, fewer defects, less, less, less. And so that's what I was writing on the whiteboard, leaving space in the middle for the name we were going to come up with. And that was when John Krafchick, who must have been about 25 years old, said, let's call it lean. And I do remember writing lean on the whiteboard like that. Said. We got it, right? Well, yes, we did. Uh, in that room, <clears throat> there was no disagreement because some people had missed the meeting. So the team, uh, there was violent agreement in the team, and the article was published as the triumph of the lean production system in the Sloan Management Review in the spring-summer of 1987. So there was the name. Now, two questions. Looking back, was it the right name? And could we have protected the name? Was it right? Well, we discovered pretty quickly 
that it was hard to translate in a lot of languages. Uh, the Germans attempted it and came up with a word that was basically anorexic. You know, these big Germans, lean, just sounds awful. There were other languages that came up with other terms. And it turned out, uh, the way it has played out, is that this became a neologism in an awful lot of languages. They decided just to call it lean. So, that's good, I guess, that people could get their heads around it. But there was an enormous problem with it, which we were vaguely aware of, but we didn't know what to do about. That we said lean is creating more value with less resources by eliminating waste. By the way, that's it. That's the definition, folks. There's no magic. It's creating more value, less resource by eliminating waste. But what people heard was the less, not the more. And uh, if you're an employee, you hear lean, well, it sounds like headcount reduction. If you're a vendor uh, who's uh, sending in stuff that you're going to figure out how you don't need to use, well, that doesn't sound good. So the world kind of focused on the negative, that it was about cost reduction. And I've said on 100 stages, 1,000 stages over all these years, that uh, the issue is how to create more value and more perfectly specified value with less resource by eliminating waste. But that's been a hard sell. And you still do get reactions uh, from people that, oh, yeah, that's that cost reduction thing. Don't know what we could have done about that. Now, wait a minute. Uh, there was a minority in the team at MIT that said, and I'm not making this up, let's call it fragile production. Fragile production. And that uh, was, guess what, the HR folks. And this was Professor uh, Shimada, Hiro Shimada, and Professor McDuffie, John Paul McDuffie. They said, we must call it fragile because it is totally based on engaging people. And if you call it lean, it sounds mechanical and cold. So let's call it fragile. And so I said, well, that's great, and let's turn out the lights and go home because uh, there is no way anybody in industry, uh, some CEO anywhere, name one, find one, who is going to say our company is committed to fragile production. <laughs> okay, this is not going to happen. So I was in the majority. McDuffie and I were talking about this not too long ago, and he's decided that maybe, maybe I was right. But that's how it came out. So it's a terrible name because it reminds people of cost reduction rather than creation of value. Yeah. But it's the name we got. So I thought and thought and thought, could we have done better? Now, by the way, I'm not going to ask anybody, could we do better? Because it's too late. I mean, it's been more than 30 years. Uh, what's done is done. But I could ask um, whether we should have made a more strenuous effort to protect it. Uh, it can't be service marked, can't be copyrighted, can't be patented. So therefore, just the term lean, anybody can use the term lean. I'm a lean sensei. I'm a lean guru. I'm a lean guide. I'm a lean coach. I'm just lean, and I can't stop them. Okay? And I do hear people, in the name of lean, saying the most remarkable things. And I do sort of want to call some lawyer somewhere and say, can't we put a cork in this? But we can't. And so the way I've reconciled myself to that is to say that lean lives or dies through experiments. So let's call all those experiments lean. And the ones that work, that create more value with less waste, let's say those really are lean. And the ones that don't, well, that's something else. So I've uh, said in the past, say again now, that uh, the life of lean is through experiments. Lean's future is through experiments, uh, which all of us are engaged in right now. So that's how we got the name lean. I think it is the least bad name we could have come up with. I hate to say that, like democracy is the least bad form of government. I think it's the least bad name we could have come up with. I think that we've run a pretty open source world here. LEI has tried to be a big tent. Said, come on in with your ideas. Let's see your experimental results. And we'll let time tell whether this is real lean 
or faux lean, or wrong lean, and we will march ahead on that plan. Thank you.